So we carry on with our explanation for chapter one, and we have reached railway uh, freight planning. And we will be talking in this section about railway freight planning in a very quick, in, is some of the very quick insights that you need uh, to consider. But also we'll be talking about computer aided uh, uh, software and finally marketing the rail industry. So without further ado, let's start. Uh, Here we start with the freight. This is some of the slides that will be go through. Here we have freight railways. So actually freight railways is a, a very important uh, part of railway services <clears throat> to move freight. But there are different types of freight that you need to move. It can be coming as uh, small boxes that you can put on a container, but also it can be like a whole uh, kind of raw materials, such as wheat, coal, uh, uh, some uh, phosphate. So there are different types of, how, of uh, carriages that you would use to transfer different types of freight. And for example, in our interview with Mr. Mehdi Haydarpour from Iran, he talks about that the mining industry, the iron ore mining industry, have built their own uh, railways to move their uh, to move the iron ore. So it's important for freight services to move uh, uh, to move railway uh, to move uh, freight in a in a safe uh, manner, but also in the most uh, in the right form. So. It's not only that, but now you can use DHL or uh, some of the famous uh, logistics companies, and you can use air freight, you can use uh, uh, sea freight, and they use for, uh, ships or uh, the, uh, air, uh, airways or uh, planes to move part of the sh shipment, then they, then they do it through a truck. And the railways offer, and they offer these tracking services, and they offer this tracking service, which affect the quality of the uh, the quality of the uh, the quality of the service. I think it's a great opportunity that we have freight railways who have a, a clear interaction with their customers. Some uh, the customers know how they can use the freight train service. Also, that we can we have a, a tracking that can be uh, to the to different uh, shipments. The freight train characteristics is, there are also the freight train characteristics is, is different. And this is very famous. You can see the, those big locomotives in the United States, for example, in companies like PNC, BNSF or uh, Union Pacific. And you can see the length of the train and tons per linear meter. And you can see that some of the, uh, some of the uh, axle weight that, can you, that you, you can reach and some of the freight trains can be uh, 40 tons per axle. So, so it's uh, heavy uh, vehicles, long vehicles, uh, sometimes using a locomotive, and the loading gauges should take uh, should consider this uh, this the size of the vehicles, and sometimes double stacked containers. So, the, this is this is what should be considered in the loading gauge: a container on top of uh, two containers on top of each other. The second thing is speed and speed acceleration. Freight railways does not have that, uh, it's not as fast as uh, passenger railways, uh, but it should, it would have a, 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 a safe uh, speed, uh, a safe speed, but they, they, it would not be slow, but it would be appropriate. Choice of vehicle types, there is hoppers and there is, uh, you can move through containers and containers are different than hoppers. Hoppers are good for you for uh, moving uh, uh, raw materials such as iron ore, phosphate and uh, wheat, while uh, uh, container or uh, uh, container vehicles are moving, uh, are good for moving smaller shipments where you can put them in the container and as the container reach the terminal, you can take that container, uh, container out. Usually it's four axle coal hoppers and sometimes it, it becomes six axle just to distribute the load across the infrastructure. Yard and train running performance, also another aspect that you should consider in your planning. The way you unload and load the, uh, the shipment, whether it was raw material or it was 
containers should be as fast and as practical to ensure that you have a, 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 the maximum capacity and that you have a, a proper and reliable service. That was about freight railways. Now we'll be talking about computer-aided uh, software in, in planning and management. So we talked about different calculations, and so one of the calculations that we talked about is a capacity assessment. Of course, there are other calculations that you need as a railway operator or as a, or as a railway engineer, and many of the uh, computer software can help you with deliver, uh, in delivering that. Uh, so software can provide a good layer for computation and visualization. It's not only computation, but also visualization, the visualization of information and presenting them in a, an acceptable manner that can, uh, can aid decision-making in a great way. Well, some of these cal uh, calculations, the train performance calculation, which considers curves, braking, acceleration, uh, headway analysis, multi-train operation simulation, strategic fleet planning and scheduling, assets management, making sure when to maintain them, when to renew the assets. It's all an example of some of the calculations that you would be doing using computer-aided software. This is a simple architecture that explains some of the things that you can do within a simulation or within a computer-aided software. And you can see this part is responsible for strategic forecasting. This part is respons uh, responsible for operational scheduling. This part is responsible for service delivery. So here, you can think on a strategic level. And on the strategic level, you would provide information from infrastructure. You would provide information from train service. You will provide information about your fleet, the vehicles. You will provide information about the crew. And finally, you would provide information about customers. And the operational scheduling, you would be looking at the network availability, where I will be fitting my timetable. Then you would assign, uh, based on this network availability, you will develop your timetable. And with your timetable, you would have fleet scheduling and vehicle assignment. And you'd have crew scheduling and crew assignment. So it's not about we'll have a train every 10 minutes. No, we will have, uh, 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 for example, uh, a train called Ansaldo at 10.010. Uh, uh, and the driver of that train will be John. So you assign the vehicle, you assign the crew, uh, uh, the type of vehicle, and you assign the time. And with that, you develop the timetable and you have some expectation about the yield based on your customer's expectations. N then you manage the network, you manage the trains, you manage the vehicle, you manage the crew, you manage the customers until you reach your performance. So some of the software examples that we have is RailSys. RailSys is very famous for doing simulations and capacity simulation. Vizim is another uh, transport uh, software. Civil 3D can help you in planning the route alignment and more. So that was a, a quick introduction about computer-aided uh, software. And now we'll be talking about how we can market the rail industry. Sometimes the rail industry is not very famous industry or does not exist in certain countries. And you need to build a case that the railway can act as part of an intermodal transport journey. And that with that intermodal transport journey, you would be able to focus on uh, that the, the, the metro will be, uh, will be in assignment with the, with, with the metro, will be working with buses, will be working with the taxis, will be working with cars to achieve a door-to-door -door journey or a seamless door-to-door -door journey. So intermodality is one. The second one is focusing on some of the problem, the congestion and the whole life cycle cost or the economical cost. What is the cost of a one minute delay? How many minutes we spend in congestions? So we, we you can, if you think about the economical cost or, or different cost components, you can think about congestion, you can think about cost. The third thing is the development of technology that provide new services that is beyond transport. For example, there are many, uh, and we mentioned like uh, one of the examples that we mentioned that, for example, when people uh, thought that the railway is not as good as it should be, for example, what someone like Elon Musk has this, decided to develop a new mode of transport, which is called Hyperloop, which is a vacuum train. So it helps in developing new, uh, new modes of transport and new modes of uh, travel. And remember, the air, road, the rail, and maritime is always in competition. And these days, metros and high-speed rails are on the boom, are, are booming. Now, 
what else we can do uh, talk about rail marketing approach it can provide the human capital for both defense based r and d telecommunication industries so if we have a railway industry this would actually the enhance the human capital in other uh, industries the, the rail also can be a very can be a very attractive mode of choice where you have a strong congestion problem metros would be a fantastic solution for such a uh, such a thing, strong individual stories. We know about Elon Musk, the Gates, the uh, the the, uh, the famous figures, the, those actors, and you really need a compelling story about that transport engineer. And Firas Nasser have a very good story. That engineer was coming from Jordan, a country which does not have a a, a big railway line, and traveled to the uh, to the UK to get a master's degree in railway systems. And after getting a master's degree in railway systems, he come back and try to offer solutions for some of the problems that happen in the desert and does not get supported. Then he goes to. Uh, he goes to another country and invent a new solution and market it to several people and then he built the railway core so so it's 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 a strong story of someone who is keen on on uh, it's a strong and compelling story for young people who would like to contribute to the industry because you need these passionate people to push the limits to push the limits of what is available to go to the next generation of technology now we talk about university courses University courses is important also in marketing the rail industry. If people don't know such a, a, a mode transport exists, they would not know how to build it or they would not propose building it because there are some details that many engineers or transport engineers should be aware of. And I, the final thing is by big aspiration project. Think about the European Rail Network or two hours from Cairo to Amman, one hour from Abu Dhabi to Riyadh. These big projects that people can think about and dream about and maybe realize would act as a good marketing uh, story for the industry. Now, how, now we have an industry, how we can market this service. So now we have a service and we need to think about who are our customers. So we need to think about the right customer, the right product, the right price, and the right time. And by that, we should be thinking about how we can, how we can find the right, uh, how we can find the right marketing message for the right customer and offer him the right product at the right price at the right time. Think about business travelers who would like to take high-speed rail and save two minutes or leisure travelers. Think about daily commuters, uh, commuters who would go to school every day, what kind of uh, fare they would be th uh, paying. Think about freight customers. And so it, with this, I think, but uh, I think it's important that you have a simple, clear message that people can understand and remember and make sure that you offer the right product, the right price, uh, price and the right time for these customers because clarity is also an important part of marketing. Now we have reached our end of this chapter. This is the references where you can see some of the uh, uh, pictures and uh, uh, some of the references that I have used. It should, I should highlight that uh, I have taken uh, parts of these notes from the University of Birmingham uh, master's course in railway systems engineering and integration. And uh, I, we are keen on building on this course and developing the content and uh, even farther. And we will make sure that we have these courses where you can actually apply hand-on experiences and develop step-by-step -step calculations to the things that you uh, aspire and to the things that you like and based on that you will be able to uh, you will be able to uh, have a better understanding of the railway industry but without a background without having a proper background of what we are designing for or what are the context you might not understand why i'm applying this simulation or why i'm applying this calculation or why i'm using this software so this background will give you the entry and the background necessary to make you to have a hands-on experience on a specific field in the future that was the end of chapter one uh, i hope you enjoyed it we'll carry on with chapter two with each about trailing stock and uh, we hope uh, to see you uh, in person in the future in one of our events and uh, have a great evening